With a closer look at the GOP health care plan, we're joined by James Capretta, fellow at the American Enterprise Institute. So, James, the president was not able to convince some conservative Republicans to support this bill. Do you think this is more about policy or about uh, getting within the Republican Party, politics within the Republican Party? I think it's policy, basically. I mean, you're going to have different, it's a pretty big party and a lot of people with different views. It's a complicated subject. And you've got dis differences of opinion about what needs to be done to make this market work better. And you've got a, one group that says even more withdrawal from some of the rules that were in the Affordable Care Act are necessary to make it even a minimum step forward, and others who say if you do that, you're going to have other problems. So it's a disagreement on policy mainly. So then when you think about the bill, what is it exactly about it that's stopping some Republicans from supporting it? They view it as uh, a, a absolute necessity to repeal all of the Affordable Care Act's insurance regulations, things associated with uh, pre-existing conditions, for instance, and the coverage and the premiums that are charged on a community-rated basis. They would like to get rid of both of those requirements uh, and allow the market to really decide premiums and coverage freely. Others say if you do that, you got to make sure that people have an incentive to stay enrolled in insurance. And so there's a, a real disagreement about how to move forward. And also they're restricted by how much they can do in this kind of a bill, which is un, under reconciliation, and, and it has to be budget-related for it to pass through the Senate. Well, noting that there are still some of these Republicans who are just not convinced, how big of a hit do you think this is for the president? Well, so far it's just a delay. I mean, they're mm -hmm. saying they're not having the vote tonight. There's been no announcement about when the vote will be rescheduled. So I wouldn't assume that this thing is not going to happen, that they are probably still going to continue negotiations, continue working to try to find some consensus to get some the 216 votes they need to pass it. What is the future of the HHS mandate, which requires employer health plans to cover birth control and abortion-inducing drugs, do you think? Well, the Trump administration has the power now to get rid of the HHS mandate through regulatory change. It was instituted by a regulation. It can be withdrawn by a regulation. And so the Trump administration, even before a new law passes on health care, can move forward to undo what was done in the Affordable Care Act in this area. I hope and think that they will eventually get to that, and that's really an urgent priority. The Congressional Budget Office estimates that 24 million Americans will lose coverage under the GOP plan. Do you think that number is accurate? It might be a little high. I do think that some of the assumptions they use probably push that number up. But directionally, I think we all have to understand, is probably right. There will be people losing coverage under this bill, and I think it's a concern, actually. I think the, the GOP would be better off making some changes to the bill to make sure that especially lower-income households can still afford health insurance. That means doing something around the tax credits to make them better for people at the low end, and also maybe a compromise on Medicaid. What level of the poverty line do people stay on Medicaid? James Capretta, fellow at the American Enterprise Institute, thanks so much for your insight. Thank you.